The Dungeness River on the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State has one of the driest watersheds west of the Cascades, averaging only 17 inches of precipitation annually near the town of Squim. A limited water supply, especially in the late summer, has created competition between water users such as municipalities, agriculture, and fisheries. Thanks to NASA's emphasis on implementing their technology and social applications, Dungeness River managers will have a new tool for managing over-allocated water resources. A water budget model is being developed using NASA technology that will improve the scientific basis of watershed management decision making in the Dungeness. A water budget model tracks and quantifies all of the water in a drainage basin, including precipitation, snowpack, groundwater, and stream flows. The model is then used to forecast future water availability. This model is being developed by Pacific Northwest National Laboratories, Idaho National Laboratories, and with field assessment of model outputs provided by Peninsula College faculty and student researchers. While still in its developmental stages, satellite data, namely snow cover and weather, is being compared with measurements taken on the ground by the field team. This ground truthing helps refine the model's inputs, making it more accurate and useful. To gather snow data for input into the hybrid model, we use the Natural Resource Conservation Service's snow sampling protocol at 10 snow courses we set up within the Dungeon S watershed. First, we assemble and inspect the snow sampling instrument, similar to a graduated cylinder with an open cutting edge at the bottom. Before sampling any snow, the tube must be clear of snow and debris. We then vertically insert the tube into the snow until it reaches the ground and turn it a few times to free the snow core. The depth is read off marks on the sampling tube and we record it on a data sheet. The sampling tube is carefully removed from the snow, keeping the core of snow inside. We look at the bottom of the tube to make sure the core reached the ground surface. This is seen by dirt or debris at the bottom of the tube. If there is debris, or an earth plug, at the bottom of the tube, we remove it with a butter knife. If we leave it in the bottom of the tube, it will throw off our results. The thickness of the plug is subtracted from the snow depth to give an accurate measurement. We weigh the tube with the snow, then subtract the weight of the tube. Two measurements are made from the weight of the snow samples. First, the density tells how fluffy or packed the snow is, and allows us to check for consistency between samples. Second, the water content of the sample, or the snow water equivalent, gives the stored precipitation equivalent in inches. Each snow course has five sampling points where we repeat this procedure. In addition to the snow data, we also record current weather and soil conditions. At six of the 10 snow courses, we have installed battery operated weather stations from which we retrieve stored weather data. The installation is no easy feat. Each weather station weighs over 60 pounds and has a footprint larger than a kitchen stove. In the more remote parts of the watershed, this means strapping gear and equipment on researchers' backs, young and old. We spend time on foot, ski, snowshoe, sled, and in four-wheel drive. Terrain ranges from forest roads and maintained trails to dense vegetation and snowdrifts. But we do get to see beautiful sights along the way and get a pretty good workout as well. Weather station assembly is easy back at the lab, but in the snow it's a bit more difficult. First the tripod is assembled, then each station must be anchored to the ground, which means we have to clear the snow to ground level on a surface that is penetrable for one foot metal stakes. Even though science is hard work, you gotta work hard and play hard too. The weather stations are partially assembled in the lab and bench tested for operability. Once they are transported into the field, we do the final assembly, including leveling of the instrument mast, attaching the temperature and relative humidity sensor, and the rain gauge. We set the instruments to the necessary height and direction to be consistent from station to station. Finally, we activate the weather station and it records conditions every five minutes, saving it to an internal memory. While field work can be strenuous, it's often the easy part. The development and implementation of the model requires a team or solutions network of researchers, operators, and users. The lessons learned by the North Olympic Peninsula Solutions Network will be used to evaluate how NASA science can serve society throughout the nation by improving water management, agricultural efficiency, and ecological forecasting. For more information, please visit our website.